I'm joined now by Petro Poroshenko. He was president of Ukraine from 2014 to 2019, and he is joining us from Kiev. Mr. Poroshenko, welcome to DW. We just saw images there from the bombed-out maternity clinic in Mariupol. First, I want to start with getting your reaction to that attack. This is absolutely clear that this is the demonstration of the genocide of the Russian troops and absolutely madness, the crazy maniac Putin. Thus, he can explain for what uh, more than 50 Ukrainian children were killed by Russian troops. Only in Mariupol, the mayor of Mariupol informed about 1,300 killed civilians. This is not only in Mariupol when we have a maternity home or children hospital. They are attacking more than 250 schools, more than 122 hospitals, more than uh, 2,000 civilian objects. And with this situation, this is no explanation. This is absolutely a uh, demonstration that Russia act even not like an aggressor, but as a terroristic steps. And our reaction on this behavior of Putin and Russian troops and Russian state would be exactly like a terroristic steps. And well, now it is extremely important that the whole world is united. You said, I'm Mr. Poroshenko, just quick question. You said our reaction will be exactly like this, these terrorist steps. What do you mean by that? This is that the, we should be shoulder to shoulder in uh, demonstrating the uh, support of Ukraine, not only by finance, not only by political means, but also in the defensive capabilities. With that situation, I think it would be difficult to explain why Ukraine, who fighting here, not only for Ukrainian soil, not only for our ch children or for our uh, ladies, we are fighting here for freedom, for democracy, because Putin declared the war not only to Ukraine, but the whole West. He declared the war against Germany, against US, against UK, against Europe. And we should be understand that. And mm. giving us the jet fighter, giving us the anti-tank missiles or uh, rocket uh, launcher, okay. uh, giving us the anti-aircraft, this is exactly the role we Ukrainian here on the ground fighting. Can you imagine that from here to the position of the Russian troops is less than 10 kilometers? Mr. And Poroshenko, here is the front. I understood. Let's talk about what you just mentioned, this message to the West. We have seen some reluctance to send fighter jets to uh, aid Ukrainian forces. We know, as you know, that, that NATO has been reluctant, for example, to take up the offer from Poland because of fears of escalating the conflict further. What do you think about these concerns from Ukraine's allies? First of all, I want that you should have absolutely clear understanding. Putin do not stop on Ukraine. If Ukraine failed, nobody knows where tomorrow it would appear. If Putin now want to create the land corridor between Crimea and occupied Donbass, why tomorrow he do not want to make a land corridor from uh, Russia to the Kaliningrad region through Lithuania? This is understanding. This is our joint war. And Ukraine simply don't have a time to wait until the Western politicians make a decision to give us a jet fighter. This is very simple. And this, this is, first of all, this is the life of Ukrainian. Every single hour we lost our civilian, our soldiers, our children. And this, everybody should understand the price for delay. At the end of the day, I don't have any doubts that uh, flight would be here. And for example, we when we're talking about uh, no flight zone and if you are reluctant not you but western politicians are reluctant to give it to us because that is the demonstrating that some nato member states would be uh, in the war you should understand nato is already in the war with russia and this war was launched not by the nato member states but by putin and uh, if tomorrow for example the russia will continue the attack of the chernobyl or zaporizhia nuclear power station, which is 10 times more powerful than Chernobyl. That is the factor that uh, the nuclear contamination don't have any border.
And that's why we are uh, protecting the nuclear power station, protecting civilian object, protecting Ukraine. We are protecting Germany. Please, I, as a president, we have very efficient work with the Germany. I'm very much appreciated for the leading role of the German Chancellor Angela Merkel for the Bundestag when we have a bipartisan support. I'm very much appreciated the diplomatic assets, right. efforts okay. which have a financial. But please, now, we definitely need defense Mr. capability, increased defense capability. Mr. Poroshenko, I do want to get your take on diplomatic efforts because we have seen, as you know, this meeting between the Ukrainian and Russian foreign ministers earlier in the day that didn't seem to make much progress, but there seems to be some sort of door open, perhaps a window for the meeting between uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, and perhaps... Uh, Vladimir Putin. At the same time, you're saying Vladimir Putin is responsible for war crimes, for genocide. Should there be diplomatic talks between the two leaders? Definitely, yes. There is no any nation in the world who wants peace more than we Ukrainians. And we should use all the opportunities. And we have some progress because just one week ago, two weeks ago, Putin is not, uh, Putin is refusing to meet Zelensky, to meet Norman Deformers because he said that he has nothing to, say, to talk about. Today, because of the Ukrainian army, because of the, our soldiers, because of the unity of Ukrainian people, Putin understand that his idea of bleak Blitzkrieg is failed. And today, the Lavrov said that Putin is ready to have a negotiation. Please, get out from Ukrainian soil. Please, get out your troops. Please, stop killing Ukrainians. And this is absolutely firm basis for negotiation. Okay. I definitely know Putin very well. And I have five years' experience in negotiation with him. I don't trust Putin. Because no one, no, uh, never when he promised me to uh, make a ceasefire, to release the hostages, to withdraw his troops, never he keep his words. But please, the stronger we are, yep. the more effective is the diplomacy. We can go as far as we allow them to go. And now, uh, because of our unity, because of the sanction, because of the, our cooperation, we have a unique chance to stop Putin. Please, let's not miss this chance. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. Petro Poroshenko, the president of Ukraine from 2014 to 2019, joining us today from Kiev. Thank you for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you.